Hello, Rim to the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligent briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 335. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, all my good buddies out there. Um, wanted to let you know before I forget that uh, if you have an email address, your tax receipt went out by email today. Uh, if there's no email address, it will be mailed today. Yeah, and I just, in fact, I just did ours. It's kind of a handy thing. It comes from an organization called Realm, and it will have a link that you can download it in PDF, not only so that you can print it out now, but go ahead and save it to your desktop on your computer so that if you need it later, you can print it out again. Mm -hmm. And we just want to thank everyone. We we couldn't have asked for better support, no. uh, not only through donations, but the prayers and encouragement. You guys are the best, and we feel so blessed by God and are so grateful. And just know that we're praying for you and asking God to destroy every work of wickedness that's going on around you and, and to... Um, just have his perfect will, because that's yeah. where we all need to be, because that's where the blessings are, isn't it? <laughs> it is, and we're hearing wonderful reports of everything from wayward children getting saved and coming back to God, and all the way to uh, one individual that basically COVID had destroyed their lungs, and, and the doctors are scratching their heads because yes, God completely God. healed the lungs. Praise so God. He can do it. We, we, we serve a mighty and an awesome God. Yes, we do. And I want to remind everybody here, the Watchman Conference is coming up uh, March 17th through 20th down in Dallas, Texas. Uh, for more information, go to hearthewatchman.com. And looking forward to seeing everybody. And, uh, you know, Mary, so, so many times at the conference, I wish I could just keep a, uh, a little tape recorder or something that I can tape on because so many people will stop by the table and just share what God has done. to the. I mean, there's been times where, I just said, almost, I had to really fight crying just to, to hear the things that God was doing in people's That's lives. That's precious and, of them to share that And it, it's so precious for them to share. Uh, you know, an interesting thing, too, you know, we, we've got a, I'm working on my next book, and I've got the next two. Um, already, I'm already beginning to outline those. And, uh, guys, the um, paper shortage has gotten worse. This is something that we need to pray about. Uh, I was talking with Darren Gilbert uh was able to do, uh, Mike uh, Spalding and I did a Kingdom War Room with him yesterday over his new book, um, uh, The Return of Saturn. And guys, you know, the cost of, of paper has now gone up 300%. And, you know, the first time that I printed the Kingdom Priesthood book, uh, and th this is them taking time to create the plates and everything, we had them in-house within 30 days. I mean, I, I was, <laughs> it's like we're going to have them win? Uh, the second printing, it took five months. Now I'm being told it can take up to a year uh, to get a book printed. And so there's a lot of other ministries looking at doing maybe documentaries and stuff and kind of dialing back the books because it's, it's just so hard to get. And so we need to pray about that, that that turns around because we're in a critical point. And I'm seeing, you know, it's not only with Derek's book, but I, I see different ones. Mike Spalding's got something he's doing that God is trying to get this information to the body to prepare for the days ahead. Mm -hmm. And and books are a very viable form of that. And now it's kind of there's kind of a stranglehold. Uh, in fact, one book that I, I got yesterday, uh, Mike and I are going to have uh, this guy on the Kingdom War Room maybe in April, that has been doing phenomenal archaeological work. Uh, there are so many in archaeology that poo-poo the Bible because they say there is no evidence that, that Israel were, were was in Egypt. And now all this archaeological evidence is coming out. I mean, in the face of, of years of these of these people that really hate the Word of God, God over and over again is is revealing the Word of God is true. And this guy has a wonderful book on it, but right now it's only available on Kindle because he can't get it printed. It, it, it may be in Kindle for five or six months to a year before he can actually get the the physical book out there, which is, which is such a shame. So, guys, uh, we need to pray about that. I think we need to look at... Uh, alternative ways of getting information out. Uh, I know that the censorship is is really uh, getting worse and worse. 
Uh, and I heard from one ministry that I'm, I'm friends with that uh, they mentioned nothing about the things right now that will get you taken off, okay? Totally unrelated. And uh, pulled down because it violated. And, I, and it was just dealing with the Word of God and dealing with righteousness. It was pulled because it violated community standards. And so I, I think we're beginning to see the censorship grow uh, against the people of God worldwide. And so, guys, we need to pray about that. And with that said, I'm going to – Mary's got a lot of uh, interesting information in the news that she's wanting to cover. Well, um, I heard somebody say recently – I was watching a, a show, and, and I heard somebody say that um, America is putting too much emphasis on politics. And I will agree in this regard. We can't put our trust in politicians fixing anything. <laughs> But I will say this, um, the United States is in a unique position uh, because there has been a founding that I believe was of God. I know a lot of people just say, no, this was all, goes all back and it's, it's all yucky, there's nothing good. Um, I've seen God use the United States many times, like he could, he could any nation. But the, but the thing that makes it different is why politics are important in my view is because you know this last week the supreme court blocked uh biden's jam med jab mandate on companies um of course they gave the go-ahead to uh, the health providers that receive medicare and medicaid yeah. and there's precedent for that because they receive federal funding but what what i'm trying to say is I can agree with that statement some because I, I do think everybody puts a lot of trust in a particular candidate. I never have. I think God can use anybody. I think he's used different presidents for different positions um, and just put things uh, in a certain way even when I don't think that person was a good person. I think, I think God, you know, it's kind of like in Prim, that was a Persian king. <laughs> <laughs> that God used to to save his people. You know, so so God can do a lot of things. And the and the thing that I wanted to, to point out is we there's two things that I believe will help mitigate judgment coming toward the United States. One thing is if we can get fair elections. And the second thing is is that to pray that everything hidden about every candidate will be revealed. Because so many times you'll you'll have somebody that says I stand for this and and they don't, mm -hmm. they don't really. They're just trying to get in under particular party. Yeah, and watch I'm, what they do, not what they promise. You know, and there there are a lot of conservatives in the Republican Party, but that doesn't mean a whole lot to me anymore. I mean, there's there's so many things, but I I I can't give up on praying for the government because especially right now. Because there's so much in the balance of so many people being going to be harmed and all these things happening. We've got to give it our best shot, guys. It, I mean, we're, we have to, to try to, to get people in there because those Supreme Court justices are, you know, nominated and, and by the president. Yeah. And we, I, I think we need to change our paradigm about things. What we call the Founding Fathers— are not the founding fathers. The founding fathers were the pilgrims that came over that made covenant with God. They are Jonathan Edwards. They are George Whitfield. They, are the, they were the ones right. that, that dug deep the foundations of righteousness. Those, the, the framers of the Constitution, what they did is they framed in the first floor on the foundation of what others had done, and, and even they knew whether they were Christian. There were a lot of Christians involved. I mean, Christianity has been involved every step of the way in this. They understood that government is a is is a necessary evil, but it can become a raging bull. Okay, which is what we're seeing today. But it's the church's job to be the corral to keep that bull pinned in. And, 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 and if we don't do that, then you have a raging bull going down the street, running over people and destroying everything mm -hmm. in its path. And government has the tendency to do that if yeah. it goes unchecked. That's why 
Even George Washington in his final address, you know, he number one, he wore, he he warned about parties, especially if you ended up with two parties, because they would have vindictive vendettas going on between the two, and we, we see that today. But he said, listen, we have created a democratic republic, and as long as you remain a moral and religious people, you can keep it. Mm-hmm. Because he understood that the morality of the church is what kept the government corralled because it's we the people. It's not some aristocracy somewhere. And so the church needs to be very involved because we're going to see later that that, 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 that corralling effort is a part of the job of the church in any culture in which it exists. That's right. And we, um, you know, what I believe is going on right now with this satanic agenda, you know, with everything that's going on, is I think Satan's trying to to kill the harvest before it comes in. Oh, absolutely. And I think our, our focus is on getting people saved and, and walking in the kingdom and doing God's will. But I think we're in a specific place right now that that there's a lot of, of things that could be done right for God's kingdom. And so let's don't lose track of that in everything that's going on. Um, I just think it's important that we continue to pray that that we'll have fair elections, that everything hidden is revealed about every candidate, so we know what's there. What's you know, up? it would be wonderful if there if there would be a politician that was just raised up, and you know, it would be great in this nation if you didn't have to be a millionaire to be a president. Yep. You know. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if there, there was just a grassroots person that d- feared God and just wanted this nation to move in a godly direction? Wouldn't yeah. that be something? We need to get the corporations out of the election process because it has gotten to the place where uh, we have what is called a representative government. Those guys are supposed to represent us. Mm-hmm. But today the reality is they're, primary, they're primarily representing the corporations that write out their really big checks. Right. And that that needs to stop because the, the it was never framed uh, in that manner. See what I think's going on is everybody just thinks okay, we're we're rolling through Revelation, and it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And that that's the way we've all been taught. Um, but I have for years believed that God's told me that there's a period in here where He's going to show His power. Mm-hmm. And if everybody goes to a concentration camp, and if this happens, and if this happens, I don't understand how God's power would be shown under, other than those those times when there are just supernatural things happening. you know. And, and I believe that's getting ready to happen. I believe we're going to have more angelic. But what I believe is going on right now, and Mike, you correct me if you disagree with me, what I believe is going on is there is judgment on the wicked because that cup of iniquities been overflowing for a while god's got a people he's raising up that are going to survive the battle because this it comes down to a spiritual battle on if you know your authority you can you can call this stuff down you can stand and bind and loose and and you can hinder what the enemy's doing for the sake of god's will for his kingdom's sake you know many of the antinacian fathers believed uh that the, what we call the tribulation period was necessary for not only for the cleansing of the church, but the maturing of the church that we're going to, you know, there's, there's one thing going through boot camp, you know, whether you're army or Marine, but there's a whole nother level of seasoning goes through when you have actually been on the battlefield and you have won victories. And because a lot of things fly out the window, a lot of our, um, and we, Mary, we, I, I've seen this overseas and in places like we will have denominational lines and we'll, we'll fight about the timing of the rapture and we fight about all these things. When you get into the heat of battle, Mary, those become very petty things that quickly become jettisoned and it comes back down to the core of what the kingdom is because uh, it, you don't have the luxury of those things. And I, I think sometimes the, the Laodicean church has actually facilitated uh, causing immaturity in the body of Christ 
because sometimes it's that pressure and that conflict that that and, and us learning to move in our authority to hold our own to say that's enough we're not going to allow that anymore well and and see what i think is going on right now is is while this judgment's coming and i mean everything's going to be shaken and there's going to be things that are going to be hard for people to even comprehend and and that battle though that's going on we can teach people how to be the warriors Mm-hmm. That's that's what I think. I mean, I, that's what I think we're oh, supposed to do is give people the resources, give people the um, knowledge and testimony of what we've yeah. been through to show them there's a way that you don't have to get your head beat in in spiritual warfare, and you can stand and you can say we forbid this. One of the things that uh, I've been looking at because it, it was just sickening to me when I, I heard it. So I went back even like in uh, 2015. I read an article that was in the I think it was the New York Times, about this compost in humans and putting it as fertilizer? Is On that not lands. the grossest thing you have ever heard? That is just so gross. I can't even imagine that they would contemplate that. And I guess it's been going on. There's, I think Washington State's got something going on with that. I also heard that Bill Gates is the largest farm owner in America, and he's been pushing this. I guess it's called... Uh, alkaline hydrolysis. And I just think that is one of the grossest things I have ever heard of. And I think that it is it is calling us anyone that can, let's let's start growing more. <laughs> let's let's yes. support local farmers. Let's know uh, where you know I knew where the fertilizer I got last year came from. You know, and and so those are the kind of things that we can do. Now, you know, some people can't, and I'm a firm believer that we pray over our food and God can remove harmful ingredients, sanctify yeah. it, um, and maybe take miracle work and power in, in that. You know, most of the time it's not a big serious thing, but this is serious, I think. You know, and just for the record, our our uh, our fertilizer last year came out of the, uh, the south end of a northbound cow, okay? <laughs> And that's that's the way God meant well, it to be. Well, and there's but, all kinds of of good fertilizer that you could know what's going on. Like people raise rabbits and they chickens have, and and all that. Um, but you know, one of the things the elite do, the elite plan decades ahead. They're putting certain mechanisms in place. You know, when you read uh, things about like the Black Plague and everything, uh, nations were struggling because there were so many dead bodies. They were stacked up like cordwood. Of course, that creates a whole new problem with, with spreading of disease. And I have wondered if they have not put this into place because they're expecting eventually for something to happen to cause such an overwhelming of, of casualties that they're going to say, listen, uh, we, we can't bury them all, we can't, but, but we can turn them into fertilizer. Uh, these people don't think right, but that's that's kind of with, within their thinking. Well, I... I can tell you where their thinking comes from, straight from the pits of hell. Yeah. It reduces <laughs> humans to animals. They're you know, saying we're not created in the image of God, and we are. And the human body, unlike any other species on the planet, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, was made to house the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And therefore, it's unique and needs to be treated with dignity, not this junk that they're doing. Oh, it's just, it's really disturbing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to continue to pray over Bill Gates that God would forgive his sins, the sins of his ancestors, break all occult power, and I bind Satan's power to use him. Yeah. I bind it, and I loose the power of the kingdom of God to stop a satanic agenda there. Yes, in Jesus' name. And God's the only one can do it. Yep. Now, I don't think a, a person, this is not something a person is going to do. This is this is something that Almighty God's going to do. And it's it's this war we're getting ready to see uh, where God's taking it up with the evil people. But as he does that, guys, you're going to see the retaliation from the satanic kingdom. You know, I think part of the, the, this, this whole thing that we need to be praying is, Lord, let everything hidden be revealed. Mm. Because when this stuff sees the light of day and people rebel against it, 
Uh, Mary, I, I see a time where organic will include making sure that that was not the kind of fertilizer put on, on land and everything. Well, uh, the, the label organic is questionable anymore. Yeah. You know, and, and 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 people are trying to you know the the corporations always try to redefine it. You know, you see stuff that says all natural. That does not mean it's organic. And well, what they what they define natural, I'm thinking I don't think so. You know. Well, there's a lot of things natural that you wouldn't want to eat. Like arsenic is 100 <laughs> um, percent natural. You know. You God did tell me this last week as I was praying. He said there is another level of revealing coming. Yes. Um, and God is good to us. You know. The things that we saw 28 years ago, he let us see in increments because it would have been overwhelming for anybody if we'd seen it all at once. And so he's going he's gonna to reveal another level. And um, with each level that re- is revealed, the warfare will increase because the kingdom of darkness loses power when their secrecy is broken. Yes. So that's, that's the battle we're facing right now. And you know, I think I think this revealing is is twofold because even the word apocalypse that we get from the Book of Revelation, which is the revealing of Jesus, mm-hmm. where I, I think what we're going to see and see if this agrees with your spirit, Mary, is not only is God going to reveal what the enemy is doing, He's going to reveal new aspects of Jesus that the church has forgotten over the centuries. Mm-hmm. And there's I going to be because I I really think the Book of Revelation is the fifth gospel, but it's the gospel to the uh, bond servants of the Lord, because we have forgotten who he is. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> but I've, the satanic agenda is not flowing smoothly. Um, there was a poll, and 70% of the people don't trust what's coming from Dr. Fauci anymore. How about that's, that? That's huge, because that's the one that everybody was looking to. Um, the Marine Corps is the first military branch to grant religious exemptions for the jab, and I was encouraged by that. Good for the Marine Corps. And I'm praying that the, the rest of them will, will be able to do the same thing. I heard a, another report that uh, somebody said that there's an estimated 20% of Americans that are waking up, and if we get to 50%, it will have a huge impact. So, I mean, 20% of America is pretty, pretty big. I mean, 28 years ago, what would it have been? Well, not even 1%, don't you think? No. If Below we're lucky, that. probably about 0.5. Um, but, you know, I was trying to think of things that we need to know. What, would, what do we need to know, like, to be able to flow in the kingdom? And I was starting, starting to think about, um, are there things that we do that can hinder the flow of God's kingdom. Oh, yes. And I think, um, you know, I was just going to go through some of those and talk about that. And, and, and on the other end, you know, what can we do to promote God's kingdom? Because we're, we're bigger players in this than anybody thinks. Big time. It's, it's not just we sit here, we see what God's doing, try to perceive what he's doing, and then just sit here and say that's what God's doing. I, I think one of the most Unique and, and interesting statements is found in the very last statement in the book of Mark. It said that God went with them performing signs and wonders. That it has always, it was always meant to be God and family, not just God. God doesn't want to work for you. And that that's what that's what ha- you know with with an infant you do everything for the infant, mm-hmm. but when that child grows to a certain point, what is what is brings a joy to a parent is when those children are growing to the place that they begin doing things with you, and God wants to work the power of the kingdom with His children, not just for His children, because that's a mark of maturity. Right, and and He gave us authority. Oh, absolutely. There would have been no no need for it if if we didn't have a part to play. Oh, absolutely. We would, we would have just sit back and just watch what God did and just flow. And well, to be truthful, you know, if if that was the case, that it would, nothing was dependent upon us, you know, the moment you get saved, you get raptured. If there's nothing left here for you to do, and that you don't affect anything, we we would just have launching pads at the altars of our churches, and if you really get saved. You're gone. But no, it's we're called in to work in our Father's field. 
Well, and I, I think that there's a, a destiny with the United States. and uh, That's unique. Nobody knows how much evil is here more than me, I don't believe. Uh, I'm, I'm not one of those people that's just prideful. I, I just know that there's more than what people are seeing. And, you know, if you want to see what not following the kingdom and hindering the kingdom of God does, let's look at the 1960s. Oh my. Well, it was the satanic rebels the end to that entire era. It was. Yeah. And and look at, at the vast decay of morality from that time. Look at the horrible things that have happened through the 70s, 80s, on up to now to where we're looking at this stuff and just, you know, it's hard not to gag. Well, you know, the the thing is, and I remember I was I was researching on Jack Parsons, and so this was an occultist that was writing the uh, the biography, and he was also referring to Aleister Crowley when he when he looked at the 1960s. He said, "Sex, drugs, and rock and roll." He said that 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 is a satanic rebel, okay, and so that that was wave one. What we're having now, and it includes this this fluidity of genderism and all this craziness, is the second wave of another satanic revel that we're in the middle of to corrupt culture and it's directly linked to marxism and so guys we need to be we need to be aware of that so that we can stand against it pray against it and pray that god would save these people because i you know at the end of that satanic revel in the 1960s came the jesus movement because satan so pushed them so far away from god he pushed them into god and one of the things I have been believing is we're going to see the same thing happen today. It's going to be pushed so far that it gets so sickening, it causes people to run toward the God of the Bible. I believe it. And, you know, one of the things that, that we need to get in our mind, because it's been pushed out, we've just been in be- easy believism, you know, just everything's all nice and fluffy. For so long, we're going to have to get back to the reality of how things are. And we kind of had that done for us. Go because, back in the 90s, yeah. You know, when, when the occult were coming after us, we saw, we sure saw manifestations of, of evil spirits. Uh, we also saw angels. Yeah, we did. And that's one of the things that, that Supernatural I think, protection. I think will yeah. help if we meditate on scriptures where angels did participate in things because I think it's going to increase. And, and we can play a part in that by having ourselves ready. You know, it, um, have you ever thought, like, if you saw an angel, maybe it'd scare you? And so you would think, oh, I don't think I want <laughs> You know, the, the one that I saw wasn't scary at all. I was in a horrible, uh, it was in Walmart's the first time I saw it. And um, there was an angel sent to, to guard us. And I, I, it was just as clear as day that's what this was. He just looked like a tall man. Um, but he was there to guard us, and when he looked at the people that were sent there, I believe to kill us, uh, man, they were they were having fits, well, they were. and he was just standing there, with, you know, looking at them, and um, you know, to compare it to what you have to do in the scriptures with this is, if you're going to trust God for healing, the first thing you got to know is that is it God's will to heal? So you need to go through the scriptures that that tell you that he's your healer. He wants you to be healed and whole. And then you have to say, okay, um, is healing for today. And so, you know, and that it's a process you go through. Like if you're, if you're trying to believe for healing, you have to be grounded in the word. You, and then once you are and you meditate on those scriptures and your faith builds. And so that's a similar thing that I think we have to do with angelic, help and things like that that that's more of it's coming because now that warfare is going to increase it's it's probably going to be more common just if you're out in the public for someone to manifest a demon can i can i share this to kind of change people's paradigm the what we call the spirit realm second heaven third heaven realities they're not less real than our first heaven is they're more real. That's right. Because the what we call the third heaven is the parent reality. Everything mm-hmm. else stems yeah. from that, and so we're 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 almost in in a sense in the in a vapor, if you will. It's this one is so much less real because the these these higher realms can manipulate, can control 
Uh, you know, when Jesus, when he was he was walking, uh, you know, across the sea, uh, the, the the sea to get to his disciples, that was a storm demon or or, or storm entity that caused that to try to kill Jesus, stop his disciples, and he per, he rebuked it. It wasn't the storm; it was the spirit behind the storm. So these things could cause storms. They can cause all kinds of things, and so. It's hard to change things in the second heaven. You almost have to be a mortal of one of these angels to do it, whether fallen or otherwise. But this realm is so easily changed, so it makes it less real. That's right. And so, and there's so so many demons. So many demons. Like used to, you know, people would always say, "Oh, they see a demon behind every bush." That. Used to, that probably had some practicality to it. Maybe people were overdoing it years ago. But I'm telling you guys, yeah. there's been so much evil loosed through the activity. Well, you know, and I, I, it, there's uh, the, many of those that are prophetic come out saying you know, that, the, that there have been portals open where more demons have been loosed than, than has ever been before. And I remember and it, was, it was out of a pseudopigrapha book. And so it's not necessarily scripture, but it dealt with after the time of Noah, which you would have all these disembodied spirits of the Nephilim that really um, outnumbered man humongously, okay? And uh, supposedly, according to it, Noah cried out, and God bound a lot of them up for a certain time. And I wonder if the end days, if a lot of them are not being loose so that they can be judged, that hell is pulling out the stops, guys. That's why we, you guys, you need to begin meditating, memorizing scriptures, scriptures of your authority, scriptures of ways to walk in the kingdom, uh, scriptures that uh, really deal with who we are in, in Messiah. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to thank you his name. I, I did a conference with him down with uh, Dr. John Looper. He was the guy that was in, uh, he was a, a yoga master that got saved, really neat guy. Really wonderful, and he began to write a book about who we are in Christ. It ended up being like uh, almost almost like fourteen volumes because there's so much in the Word of God. When you take the full com- compass of the Word of God, you actually begin finding out who you are in Christ in the Old Testament or the First Covenant, and it flows on through to the Book of Revelation. Uh, guys, we've only we have only. Uh, seen the tip of the iceberg of who we really are in Christ. The more we see Jesus and the more we see who we are in him and the more we look forward to his coming, the less old us that we're going to be and the more of that new man us that we're going to begin walking in. That's why this meditating of the scripture is so important That's in right. digging into the word. Well, and, and uh, you know, that was the two points I wanted to make. That's what we can do to flow with the kingdom. And to flow in kingdom power, you have to have your mind renewed to the reality that Almighty God's all powerful. Yes, and and it doesn't look that way. It looks like evil's just just taken over, and and there's there's nothing to stop it. But He's all powerful, and He's yes. working right now. But He's I, um, He gave me a song one time, and is it was uh, He's waiting on us. Yeah, it's about He's He's waiting on us, and He's longing for His bride. Well, and he's the, waiting for us to, to take action because if we believe with all our hearts, you can use your faith and put action through prayer, and then you're going to see changes. But you have to, you know, that's one of the things we should probably do at the conference center is have resources for particular things like that, like scriptures listed that people can meditate on to see the power of God, uh, the authority that he's given us. Um, one of the things that I'm planning, and I've... Um, I want to have you those old thumb drives. I want to have them packed with stuff That'd that we can great. have it categorized. And I'm, we're probably going to do like a 64 gigabyte thumb drive that all we're going to ask is this an offering to cover uh, this, the cost of the thumb drive. I've even looking at ways of us being able to mass produce them so that when you take it home, not only can you have uh, hundreds of MP3 sermons on them, but uh, things that, We've converted over to PDF mm-hmm. that that have all this. I know that uh, Mike Spalding, he's, his last two books that he's done, he's released as free eBooks. One is is meditating on who we are in Christ. Another one is on on how things should be in the church that aren't. And and uh, Mary, those those kind of resources, if we gather them together to where you can walk out of there, and what's so cool? Let's say 
let's say one one person comes to the conference and they take one of those drives. Somebody can stick it in their computer, drop and drag all that over there within a matter of a few minutes, and you're you're sharing all that, and you have just given them a little mini library. See, that's the kind of thing that makes me think we've got enough time to train. A lot of people are saying there's not enough time for anything. There's not enough time to build. There's not enough time. You just it's just a saving of souls. But I don't think we're going to be effective in saving souls if we don't get people to where they can survive this fight to save the souls to get the harvest do you think satan's going to let that happen without an um, immense fight well you know the the, in in the book of acts it says jesus must be retained into the heavens of the times of refreshing have come and when you really unpack that because when i was a baptist i was taught you know when that last soul is saved here jesus comes but it's when that last soul is matured when when the, the, those times of refreshing have come, the, of restoration have come, that the that everything that Adam lost, everything that was messed up in Genesis six, everything that was messed up in Genesis eleven, when all of that is restored, because he's doing it through his body. I look at the harpazo as as not a an escape valve to get out here before it gets too too uh, hard on us. It is that we have held our own. We we have been like those Navy SEALs that hold the line. Mm-hmm. And no matter what flack the enemy is doing, no matter what fire the enemy is doing, we are holding the line. And when we have matured to the place that we can stand toe-to-toe to the son of perdition and all the things that are going on, and that hell's going to release his fury, and we, we know how to hold our own, and we can stop the new world order in its tracks. Yeah, we're not. Then the father's going to say, "Son, your bride has matured. Now go get her." Right, and and the son of perdition's going to come. He's got a plan. It's going to go like Revelation says. But but I am convinced we have a time. It's like that time when God showed me the loop on the timeline that was prayed in to have enough time so more people can be saved, so that so Christians can be saved. See, see, there's. This thing is not, I'm not just I'm not just worried about judgment coming on the wicked. I'm worried about the retaliation on people that think that they're okay and they've not been taught. They don't know that they've got doors. And and what do we see every day? Just an an unleashing of attacks on people. I know. And and I'm not saying that I It breaks my heart. that we've got all the answers at all. I'm just saying we got some of them because we lived through them. And we're and, looking for more. And we and we found out that if we close these doors, the less the attacks were. Doesn't mean we're not going to going to have troubles. It just means instead of crushing, it's okay, we made it through. See anything? Anything you survive? Anything that's fixable to me is a win. <laughs> it and, is, it's, you know. And when you're when you're in the heat of the battle, and the enemy starts creeping in in all these little ways, you learn to identify those. So there's going to be yeah. more identified and yep, more closed right. until you get to the place that you can maintain your perimeter. And I, I think that's part of the maturing process. Yeah. That's why John says that if you that it, a, a righteous man, a believer, will keep himself, and that word keep. In the Greek is the same that's used all throughout the scripture of, of like, you know, keep the feasts, keep them the way that I gave them to you, keep the Sabbath, keep it the way, keep the commandments. It's the same type of thing that you keep yourself, you're sanctified in the kingdom, John says, you're going to grow to the place where the wicked one touches you not. And man, that's what I'm after. I want, I want to see some spiritually bulletproof believers. I want to see, we're leaving... We're leaving Egypt. We're leaving mm-hmm. Babylon. There's blessings that come with that of of health and restoration. Right, so that and a single restored there. youth. How many of us lost our youth in one way or another? We lost our youth. Mary, I think there's even anointing coming, not only for to regain our, our youthful strength, but a lot of us because of the state that the church was in, uh, we weren't taught so much. I think that one of the reasons we're, we're trying to gather these resources is there's going to become, there's going to be released a supernatural anointing that is going to cause accelerated learning and accelerated growth to those that will apply themselves. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit says, man, I've been waiting for you to do this. And, you know, if you will put a year into this, if you'll, if you put the time into this, 
I can cause you to grow 10 years in one year spiritually if you'll just That's submit right. to my hand. That's right. Well, when, I, when I'm talking about lost youth, I'm not thinking we're all going to be like kids running around. I think we could have childlike faith, but I, I'm thinking the um, strength, health of youth, that that's what we need. I don't want to go back to be like a child because I I need wisdom. You know, I've waited my whole life to be a grandma. I thought I'd do that right. Oh yeah. You know, I want I want wisdom that comes only comes with age. But if we had the energy that the yeah, young, that them youngsters have, we could that's get something right. done. Well, and I plan on us doing it too. I'm building up my faith. <laughs> Me too. Exercising more and believing we're we're. Uh, where my phys- my physical stuff runs out, then I've got the anointing of the Holy Spirit to carry it over the line. Well, and, you know, the, there's several scriptures that God was reminded me of, and um, one's in Matthew 16, in verse 19, it says, I'll give, you, give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. See, to me, there's some gates locked. Yeah. There's some gates that need to be opened, and there's some gates of the enemy that need to be closed. Oh, and I'm waiting on the keys. And so to have for us to have the keys, we're going to be have to be able to flow in maturity and wisdom. Oh, absolutely. We can't flow in fear. No, we can't. Because and that's what's being pushed right now. You know, right now they're saying there's a hemorrhagic uh virus that's that's working over in china and they're saying it might come here there's no telling what god's already stopped in labs that he wouldn't allow him to release i think what he's done with 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 covid is i don't think people would have started to wake up unless he had done what he's done in the last couple of years or he's allowed what he's he's, done he's allowed allowed it not not i don't know this didn't come from him absolutely not but yeah. he's allowed it because sometimes it takes that kind of shaking to get people out of their comfort zone. And, and people are starting to look at it. Yeah. And the good news is they're, is they're making such ridiculous statements and their ridiculous actions that anybody ought to be looking at it. Yeah. Now, can I unpack? Because there's, there's a lot of confusion about this binding and loosing because people take different snippets. Oh, yeah. And, we need to. Um, there's, there's two places, and they're both in the book of Matthew. Uh, about binding and loosing and you know I I have shared this before you know there's the five things that you need to uh, properly interpret the word of God context geography history culture and language okay and in this first one context geography history and culture are essential because in in Matthew 16 19 when Jesus said behold I give you power uh, to bind and loose and I give you the keys of the kingdom he took the Mary to Mount Hermon. Mm-hmm. That's ground zero for Genesis 6. That he took them to where the, there, there, is a, uh, there is a cave there that all the ancient world, both Greek, Roman, and the Jewish popula- population, believed that that was the gates of hell, that the entrance to Hades was right there. There was, there was a grotto to Pan. Uh, that, that is ground. In fact, there was an ancient plaque. It's now up in... Uh, up in uh, in uh, the UK in one of their museums, a very, very ancient plaque said, this is where the ancient ones fell and made their plan against humanity. Okay, talking about the watchers, there was, a, and I mean, it was, in, it was like in Sumerian and, and different languages. All that's right there. In fact, Nimrod's fortress was right on top of there. Mm. Okay. And so Jesus brings them out of their way. He takes them right there and says, okay, who am I? Okay. Peter says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you. Now, this is because of who I am, who I really am. Mary, that represents, that, that, when, when you understand, and I, Michael Heiser and so many others have done so many wonderful things, the Genesis 6 and Genesis 11 are essential to understanding the book of Revelation because this whole fight has been against the Watchers, their sons, the Nephilim, and the principalities and powers that God divorced humanity and gave them over the Tower of Babel. That the very first uh, disciples that Jesus sent out, 70 
not 69, not 75. And it wasn't that he could just muster 70. 70 is the number of how humanity was divided at the Tower of Babel, Mm -hmm. and it was his first salvo, I'm getting the nations back, okay? And so he takes them, he says, listen, the gates of hell will not prevail against you. I'm giving you these keys that you can bind and loose. And Mary, he was not only referring to, to the warfare like we have had since the early church. But he was speaking, he was prophesying to our day when the watchers and the Nephilim are going to return and they're going to be physically in the first heaven that the church of the living God is going to understand the keys of the kingdom and that we're going to be able to bind and loose them as they manifest in the first heaven. Yep. And if that wasn't enough, you know, we always talk about the transfiguration of Christ, you know, when he went in and he showed his glory. Mary, he took he took the three up there and he took them on top of Mount Hermon to where Nimrod's fortress was. You know, Nimrod became a Neph- he became a Raphaim. And he said, Listen, guys, this is who I am. And he manifested himself in all his glory on ground zero where the watcher's head fell. Not only that, the Peter, because he used the word Tarsus, when he talked about how Jesus went and, and he, he, he preached the gospel to them, when between the cross and the resurrection, Mary, he not only went to hell and preached there, he went down to Tartarus, which if, if we would see hell as like a, a supermax prison, Tartarus would be 150 sublevels lower than hell. He went down to the watchers and say, look what I just did. I'm undoing everything that you did to humanity. I'm getting humanity back. I'm taking the nations back. I've got it done now. Boy, when you said all this in context, that's that's the context of Jesus Mm -hmm. taking them to Mount Hermon. Okay? Guys, we don't we don't fully grasp the authority that we have been given. But authority has to be grown into. That's true. Okay. It, 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 you don't give Barney Fife more than a one round for his revolver, and you make him keep that bullet in his pocket mm-hmm. because he can't handle the authority. But a fully trained soldier may have hundreds upon hundreds of rounds in his backpack and in magazines that he's carrying with him because he knows how to he knows when to use authority when not to use authority when to engage when not to engage and he continually keeps uh, an eye with headquarters to see where he's supposed to advance or where he's supposed to go that's the difference the more that we grow the more is going to be available okay now, the second one is found in Matthew 18, 18. It almost sounds the same. As surely I say unto you, whatever you bind on, on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Context and culture is the key in this one. Jesus was talking about accepting things or even individuals within your community. In that day, it was common practice. You know, the, 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 um, many times there was not more than one synagogue. It's not like today you have a church on every corner. The, there was a synagogue per city. Now, when we get to Jerusalem, there's hundreds of synagogues. But that synagogue was the place that when the rabbis would, would gather and they would say, this is what we permit in our community. This is what we forbid. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're not going to have that in our community. I don't care what the Roman Rome says. We're not going to have these things in our community. In fact, it's also expressed expressed in the Greek word that we get the word church or assembly from, ecclesia. Ecclesia in the Greek represented a community that came together, and that community would decide what it allows and what it forbids in the community. We need to wake up in our in our in our assemblies and in our communities. It is not the federal government that chooses what is allowed in there. Mm-hmm. It is the body of Messiah that we have been given divine That's authority. Right. That's right. That, and, and as we move in that community to community, we come that corralling thing that corrals in the raging bull of political power to keep it in check That's because right. we have been given the authority, not them. 
D.C. or any other government cannot uh, legislate morality. That is the job of the assembly of Almighty God mm-hmm. and in the earth. It's not been done. It's not been done. We were looking, Mary, what we have done is we would, you know, one of the things in, 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 in our ministry, one of the things we have found is that a lot of people don't want to make decisions. They want you to make the decisions for them so that if something goes wrong, they can blame you, okay? And we have the church, and in many ways have, has done the same thing with much of what goes on in our society. They have pushed us in a box, and we say, let the, let the federal government, let the local government, let them make these decisions, and, and therefore nobody can blame us. But what we have done is we have abdicated part of our authority. That's our job. We are the conscience of a nation. Mm-hmm. That we should say, you should not go. There are dangers if you go beyond this point. And we will not allow it. We'll get active at the local level. We'll get active at the state level. We'll get active at the federal level if we're to express the warning of being those watchmen on the wall as well as those leaders to say, these things should be permitted and these things should be forbidden. That's right. Forbidden. 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 (laughs) Forbidden. Forbidden. Um, Uh. Well, and don't you think a lot of of what's gone on is because there's been no no repentance and no asking forgiveness for sins. And so when, you know, you take some of these Illuminati families, Mike, they ha- and especially like if they're, if they're program multiples, they have a front part that doesn't even know what's went on. They're just oblivious to it. Oh, yeah. There's not going to be asking forgiveness for sins you don't know happened. Oh, absolutely. So if you come, you know, like a family that, that is connected to the Illuminati, to the New World Order, and, and they've been programmed to, to flow for this particular time. You know what would throw a wrench in everything Satan's doing right now? Is if we ask forgiveness for all the sins yep. over sometimes centuries that have never been asked forgiveness for. And that's what I want to do. I want to ask God to forgive the sins of every family that has been mind-controlled. Yes. Forgive the sins of their ancestors. Father, blanket that iniquity with the blood of Jesus to cancel it out, yeah. to cancel the occult power. Absolutely. Now, that's not going to absolve them from it. They would have to do personal repentance, that's but it can break the, power plug. break the occult power that is is fomenting in this United States. Yeah. You know, I, I recently heard um, somebody uh give a a prophecy and if you just listen to it you would think man this this is something um but mike it was the biggest bunch of triggers i've ever seen in my life and if somebody didn't know they wouldn't think a thing about it they'll just think well they're just they're just saying this and this well because of our background we tend to be very sensitive toward those Mm -hmm. things and it really jumps out and i thought Oh, they're triggering a bunch. They're yeah. they're triggering, and so there's all this stuff going on now. Did that person that did that? Do I believe that they knew what they were doing? No. Absolutely not. I think they got a download. I think everybody thinks every download's from God, and I don't think that they meant any harm whatsoever. Mm. But that's going on all over the place, all mm. over the place. People are saying, "I've got a word from God. I've got a word from God," and it's a broadcast to trigger somebody. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why there's there's balance that the Apostle Paul in First Corinthians said, you know, when one when one gives a prophetic word, let the other prophets judge. And somehow we've lost the context of all that. And we, we have that going on, Mary, and we have bad theologies in the body of Christ, like the hyper grace. Mm-hmm. You can't bind and loose morality when you're into hyper grace that teaches that the cross changed the definition of sin, and therefore you can do any of it. There, there's going to have to be a this this return, this shub, back to the ways of God. You can build a huge ministry off of this because it will tickle the ears of, car, of carnal Christians and unbelievers alike. But, you know, uh, and, and Mike Spaulding and I and some others, we, we always look at, you know when you're really preaching good, Mary? When you follow the example of Jesus is when you're really preaching good. One day he was preaching, everybody left him. Mm-hmm. Got mad and left him, and he turned to his disciples and said, you guys going too? 
That well, was that was some good preaching by well, Jesus. Well, you're going to make people mad. Yeah. And I mean, I, we learned that a long time ago. It used to bother me. It used to bother me when you preached when I was in such a mess and you were preaching at a small church there where I was raised. And I would leave with a migraine because I think you just ticked off half these people. Uh, and then when I got free, I'd say, go, baby, go. I don't care if you tick them off because you're going to tick people off. Tick and, the flesh off. And one of the things that, that is going to be so crucial in the days ahead to not hinder the flow of the Holy Spirit. You know, we got a couple of scriptures here. I want It's in Ephesians 4, verse 30. It says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And then there's another scripture in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17, or 18. No, wait a minute. 19. I'll get it. <laughs> Hang in there, guys. It says, Quench not the Spirit. Yeah. Now, the problem with this is we're the church as a whole, I believe, is quite confused about what is the Holy Spirit doing. Oh yeah, they they confuse their own carnal their their own carnal desires with the Holy Spirit. You, they, every the, feeling the they path think, of least resistance. They think every feeling, every goosebump is the Holy Spirit. And unless you are grounded in the Word, unless you're grounded and have maturity that has been through the refiner's fire, unless you've been uh, refined enough in your discernment to tell what's of God and what's not. Uh, remember that um, we heard someone talking about a testimony of David Wilkerson, and David Wilkerson was so rejected because he said judgment's coming. I mean, this yeah, the body of Christ beat him up bad. And he went to a, a church service, and I guess there was like a, a Christian band there, but it was more rock and roll and stuff. And they said that he got down on, I think he got down on his face and said, "The Holy Spirit is grieved." And see, see, that's the kind of thing that a lot of people think. Oh boy, that's hyped up, you know, and and boy, the, the, they'll say the Lord's moving, and you know when I look back, Mike, on all the things we've seen, a lot of times in the churches, what people said, boy, the Lord was moving, it was a spirit moving, it wasn't the Holy Spirit. Do you know when Dr. Mary Ann Brown was alive, she literally told me she was at one large church, and they they kept on saying, you know, the glory of God's getting ready to show up. And it was that that time in the service during the praise and worship, Mary. They went and flipped the switch on a fog machine, and they were calling that fog the glory of God. Well, I think I think that happens. I think sometimes <laughs> they just do it for effect, but I think but they, some they, of them have have used it. Yeah, and they were literally calling it the glory mm -hmm. of God. And she called me and she said, "Mike, I didn't know the glory of God was made by frigid air." <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's really. I mean, we joke about it, but it's really sad. It is because because now this this what we're walking into. We've been preparing for for 28 years, and it was easier for us because we had it in our face. Yeah. And and we didn't have a choice of, are we going to look at this reality that's right here with the reality we always thought was here? We were faced with the, the kingdom of darkness is manifesting, but the kingdom of God's manifesting too. So we got out of our comfort zone of, oh, we're just going to go and we're going to eat pizza today and we're going to go watch a, watch TV. And it, that was the last thing I was thinking about. <laughs> I was thinking, how are we going to survive this? <laughs> you know? but, but everybody's getting ready. Okay, now this thing with COVID, it just, it's a level of revealing. Yeah. The thing with the elections, it's a, a level of revealing. There's now we're getting more. ready to go to another level, and God told me it wasn't going to be easy. Yeah. So, so get yourself ready. Meditate on those, those scriptures of how great God is. Look at the stories where angels show up. Yeah. I, you know, when, when I think about this, I, I, I think about this old movie I watched, and it was where this group had realized that there were aliens on the planet, and they'd been fighting them, and everybody would roll their eyes at them and think they're crazy. And so when, when all this is revealed in the movie, and all these people are running saying, there's aliens, there's aliens, we got to fight, you have the old fighters, they just yell, welcome to the party. You know, and I think those that have been involved with this, we, we could have almost that attitude of saying, well, just welcome to the party. But guys, those of us that have been fighting this for a while, that God has matured, we can become God's instructors for those that are just waking up. And there is a grace and anointing, 
and there's going to be a graciousness about it. Don't don't get haughty like I can't believe you didn't see this all these years. Blah blah. But say, listen, God in His graciousness showed us this years ago, and we've been preparing, and this is what we have learned. And let me tell you, let me let me teach you how to fight it. Let me teach you how to do it. And let's encourage you that you can survive this, and you can thrive in through it. Yeah. There there's some things that you can you can shut off, and it's going to make this a whole lot easier. Yeah. There's some things you can change. There's there's some things you can learn, and it's going to make it a whole lot easier. You won't have to go down the path we went. It'll be easier, especially for these young people. Yeah. And I believe there's going to be such strong anointing on them. I believe there's there's going to be prophets raised up, and I believe that they're going to be trained right. And I and I just I think we're getting ready to see an explosion of God's power. But have no doubt that with that explosion of God's power, there is retaliation coming. We're already seeing it. We're already seeing the retaliation hit, hit, hit. And so we don't have all the answers, like we've said. We've got some. And every answer we can all, and, I, and I'm asking God, show us more, show us more. Every answer we can have, that's, that's more protection. Because I believe, I believe that we can take the kingdom with us. I believe if I go out in the public that not only is the kingdom of God going to be operating around us, but it's going to go out and affect people around me, that if there's somebody that is sick, they're going to get healed. Yeah. You know, one of the things I think we're going to see, uh, and I, I remember years ago when we had uh, that first little conference we had, we had a graduation for the seminary, and one of the messages that God gave me back then was the reestablishment of biblical councils. And one of the things that I believe that we're going to have in the days ahead, and it doesn't have to necessarily even be um, initially as as these conferences, because you know there's technology like Skype and Zoom and and all that that we can have. That you know we we have we have discovered some of the keys. We have discovered some of the doors. Uh, we have discovered discovered some of the ways to victory, but I believe that Mary, that there are other ministries in other areas God has been working on, just like He's been working on us with these. Okay, and so I see the the leadership coming together and saying, "Listen, let's have a council so that we can pull together. Let's take what you have learned. Let's take what you have learned. Let's and, and let's let's go ahead and share it amongst one another. It's not proprietary knowledge. It's the kingdom of God. And if yeah. it wasn't the Holy Spirit, we we would not have learned it. We would not have survived it. And uh, we're not in competition with one another. But each one of us have a piece of the puzzle. And when you put all the tactical spiritual information that God has given together, together you can better prepare the saints. And I, I see in the days ahead yeah. that coming and I, becoming I a reality. And boy, I welcome that because nobody has all the answers. No, nobody. It'll always be a corporate effort. I don't know if corporate's a good word, but, you know, a, a joint effort of God's people coming together with their their speciality of what God's groomed them in and taught yeah. them. And I just, I think that's what your war room is about, yeah. is, is you the, getting in there. and Well, I, I think the, the remnant body has a local body, but has a national body, and it has an international body. And as we, and that's what the Apostle Paul said, not everybody can be a hand, not everybody can be an arm, not everybody can be a leg, but we all together, as we function together, and it's all about building kingdom, and it's all about preparing the remnant. It's not about anything else. When we do that, Mary, I think there's going to be just a wealth of information like nobody's business is going to, is going to come. And I, I think sometimes we're going to be, we're going to set, and, and even us at this position, when, when other people share with things, we're going to say, you know what? I can't believe we allowed that all these years. Uh, Mary, I remember when, you know, you were coming out of the Depression and, and uh, it, to me, it was a gift of God, even though back then it was really aggravating that, <laughs> that, uh, that you I was aggravating. <laughs> you were questioning my theology because, you know, I'd, I'd say, well, this is what I've been taught. And you said, I don't think that lines up with the Word of God. You, can, you, you, need, to, you need to do that exit whatever it is to these. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know what it was, exegesis. <laughs> exegesis. You need to exegesis this stuff yourself. And I would do it, and I, I, I mean, there were times – I sat there looking at my conclusions, lining it up with Scripture, thinking, how in the world did they ever come up with that? And how, how in the world did that ever see the light of day, much less make traction in the body of Christ? I can tell you how part of it was, is because we're taught to respect our elders. 
and you don't you don't want to question them. And I mm. I don't either. I want to respect yeah. elders, but but it comes to a point of the truth right in front of your eyes. You have to discuss it, and and I think we can do that with respect. I've seen people do it with total disrespect, and anybody get mad. But I think that we can, you know, I never want to be in a, a place where somebody can't question me about something. Oh, yeah. And, and one of the things that, in, in fact, um, I was on the, I was on uh, Alan Key's show this past week, and they had a, a fill-in minister that him and I really hit it off. And uh, one of the things that is, is interesting, you know, I always talk, one of my pet peeves is theological sound bites. And they're just as real in the pew as they are in the pulpit. But one of the things that we noted in our years of ministry is there's a strange occurrence that's happening now that if you ever challenge that theological soundbite or even ask them to define it. Now, the Bible says, you know, we we need to, in gentleness, be able to instruct and to share the reason for our hope and all these things. They will respond in absolute anger. Mm -hmm. Now, truth loves examination Truth flourishes under deep examination because the deeper you go, the more solid you become in that truth. Lies hate it. Spiritual error hates examination. Yeah, and so I, I think sometimes it was that we didn't want to question our elders, and I think there are a lot of things that just appeal to the flesh, that if it gets a good offering, if it gets the crowd riled up, you know, I remember years ago when I was in and and had for a brief time was in multi level marketing, and I want to share the organization, but I I would see people that were just mild mannered people at one of the, some of these uh, uh, meetings and stuff get up and jumping down on on their chair saying we're going to the next level, we're, and and they they would everything would just appeal to the flesh. Well, the same I've seen the same thing in churches. Sometimes they even call it raising the offering, and we, 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 have, we have allowed those tactics to come in that have warped our theologies, and it's, it's time for us to come back to a pure faith, and the Word always works, and if what you're doing isn't working, it's either we have misunderstood that Word, misapplied that Word, or there's sin stopping that word from having. Other, mm -hmm. other than that is that we're just completely off and we're not interpreting the word correctly at all, but the word always works. And I, I think we're coming to a time, Mary, that we're going to see those that have returned back to a pure word that will teach others how to hit the mark that God is having you aim at every time. And that's that's what we're looking for, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Whether it is how to, whether it's the walk in righteousness, close the doors to the enemies, how to pray more powerfully, uh, how to use our authority properly, how to pray for the sick more effectively. Yeah, because it's not just closing doors; that's a part of it. Yeah. But I mean, there's so many things in the Word. You know, in the, um, there's just a lot of things that we have to take care of. There's a lot of flesh, and it just rears its rears its head. You know, I've I got past being angry. Um, about all the the horrible things that happened, I got I got past the anger of people trying to kill us. I really did. You know, I just felt sorry for them. I thought, man, they're trapped in something. Um, I've still ha I have to work on myself because of people that have, I've been disappointed in. I have to work to make myself say the right thing, not get in agreement with the disappointment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's a daily struggle for me. I have to, and, and a lot of times I'll say something and then the Holy Spirit will check me and I'll think, yeah, I didn't say that right. I never realized probably until the last couple of decades how devastating on someone it can be for the power of disappointment in another. Mm -hmm. Never really knew the depth of it. Oh, it's, it's extremely powerful. Devastating, actually. Devastating. <laughs> and so we really have to work not to respond out of the wound or the pain that the disappointment had caused. Mm -hmm. Cause you, it, and it, it's not anger. It's just you, you get in line with what you've seen instead of what God wants. Yeah. And, and we've got to speak, you know, what God's will is into a situation and what, what his. We've got to start prophesying into yes, the situation. This it. is the will of God. Right. And then give it power. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just ask for a special grace uh, to come on all of us. Father, that we no longer frustrate the Holy Spirit, 
But Father, we begin working with the Holy Spirit yes. because he wants to position us to set us free, to reveal truth, to mature us, because we are called, according to the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 4, to stand in the full stature of Jesus. And Father, if it's ever going to come to pass, it has to come to pass in the last days. Father, give us the grace that we can show all of Jesus to a world that's caught in sin and darkness. Yes. And Father, let us see multitudes upon multitudes run to the cross. Yes. And run to the kingdom and find true freedom in Christ, we ask. In Jesus' name. In the Shinar Directive, we journey down the Luciferian rabbit hole to discover the matrix of darkness that has engulfed our planet. In the Shirith Imperative, we dug deeper to unearth the power source of hell itself and how the body of Christ can labor to impede its functioning in the earth and lay the groundwork for revival. Now it is time to unveil the mysteries of both the priesthood of the kingdom of God and the priesthood of darkness. Until these mysteries are understood, God's remnant cannot realize their purpose or be released with heaven's power to overcome the agenda of the denizens of the second heaven. The Kingdom Priesthood is a training manual for the remnant to discover their priesthood, their purpose, and their service to Almighty God. In the pages of this remnant manual, you will discover what Adam experienced in the first few moments of life and how those desires were written into the DNA of humanity. Revelations of what the Almighty meant when he told Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. Who were the first priests of the Kingdom of God in the Bible? And who was the first priest of darkness? What was the knowledge of the tree of good and evil offering the first family of humanity? How we all share the same calling as Abel. The reality of the principalities wars and how it is influencing the world today. As believers, how we are to function as both a priest and a tabernacle. The real purpose of the fire of God. How to carry the name of God in the earth with dignity and power. How the priesthood is essential for the releasing of end time warriors in the last days. How to flow in the sevenfold anointing of the Holy Spirit to represent Messiah. The Kingdom Priesthood is a call for the remnant to receive the fire of God and become the assembly that the gates of hell cannot overcome. Get your copy today at Amazon.com or KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com Power up, power up, power up, power up.